Hello and welcome to Cadet Ship News. I'm Zena Chalmers. In the following two minutes, you're about to see why you should hire me. It was a case of right versus left. Anti-racism protesters made their views clear to right-wing groups that there is no room for xenophobia in Victoria. Build a movement to say no to racism on the streets of Melbourne and also place the blame for racism where it deserves with the government for perpetuating these attitudes. The city saw the biggest of 18 rallies around the country and the most violent as right-wing latecomers crossed the barriers separating both sides. Police used pepper spray to tame the crowd. One protester severely injured had to be rushed to hospital. Reclaim Australia believes Islam will bring Sharia law to Australia. However, the crowd behind me disagrees. To the Middle East now, where at least eight people have died and hundreds are in hospital as a sandstorm engulfs the region. Parts of Lebanon, Syria, Israel and Cyprus were shrouded in a thick cloud of dust as the storm began sweeping into the region. Authorities have are uh, warning people to stay indoors. Zina Chamas has more. Skies turn yellow as a deadly sandstorm sweeps through the Middle East, leaving many struggling to breathe. The climate has changed not only here in the whole region. The weather is very strange, dust and heat waves. We haven't had such weather for decades. The dust cloud engulfed areas from Syria through to Egypt and spread all the way to Cyprus. In Syria, debris and dust shrouded over ruined buildings, leaving little of the country uncovered. Syrians say they're frustrated with their bad luck. It is unbelievable. This must be some test. It's hot, the temperature is high, and on top of that we have this dusty atmosphere. It's unreasonable. Enough, please. Lebanon was among the worst hit, with almost 100 people hospitalised in the Bekai Valley. Since yesterday, 50 patients have entered the hospital because of the sandstorm. Old people and asthma patients are being admitted because of the dust entering their lungs and we are treating them. Lebanon's health minister said two women had died from respiratory problems and hundreds more left choking or struggling to breathe. First time I've seen this, my throat hurts without these masks. Police in Lebanon were forced to hand out face masks and urged people to stay indoors until the dust settles. Zina Chamis, ABC News. To mark World Refugee Week, Amnesty International teamed up with the Melbourne City Council to host the city's first Festival of Hope. Moreland is one community proudly diverse. We're known as a city um, that has a significant intake of new arrivals. The festival is a celebration of hope to show Victorians the benefits that refugees make to our society. With a display of arts, crafts and music, the Festival of Hope aimed to connect Australians with the refugees living amongst them. I'm happy to live in Australia and I want freedom for everybody. But when it comes down to it, I don't think anyone wants to see refugees and asylum seekers, particularly children, abused in offshore detention centres. Nobody wants that. Each year, over 10,000 refugees are forced to flee their homes seeking refuge. Some Australians here are saying Prime Minister Tony Abbott should welcome refugees with open arms. This West Aubrey petrol station has been busy all day. Customers took advantage of the lowest prices on the border. And after Quick Stop dropped their petrol prices to under $1.28 this morning, it didn't take long for the word to get around. All the friends are coming here. Everyone's passing the word around. So that's... Yeah. Life that it's cheap at the moment. We came all the way from New Zaguna to get it at this price. Owner Des Packer says he's never seen such a good day's trade. It's probably the best day in business I've had. And thanks uh, for the uh, local people and their support. It's much appreciated. It's been a risky week for the independent retailer, but it's paid off. Yesterday, Mr Packer dropped petrol prices to 10 cents below his competitors, who have since brought down their own prices. Today he took it a step further, slashing another cent off the price of unleaded. And locals question why the fuel giants didn't take the lead. If the independent ones can afford to do it, then obviously all of them can, otherwise he wouldn't be able to do it. And there could be even more good news for border drivers, with the independent retailer predicting prices to drop even further. Uh, at this point in time it looks like uh, it will still uh, go down. Uh, by how much I don't know. Dina Chalmers, Prime News. 
Hundreds of activists joined together in solidarity for the people of Palestine. The State Library transformed into a platform for eager voices, both sides of the conflict standing together with the same message. We are here to stand with Palestine and express our solidarity with Palestine and uh, express that we, we are angry about uh, Israel's heavy-handed um, atrocities against our people including Daniel Taylor from Jews Against Israeli Apartheid. I'm here to say that I think people all around the world, including in Australia, have a duty to stand up against an apartheid regime that exists in Israel. And what he thinks of the Israeli Prime Minister's recent allegations on the Holocaust? Yeah, well, it's just another example of the outrageous slanders that are levelled against the Palestinian people uh, whenever they stand up for themselves against the occupation. The protesters here are urging Melburnians to stand up and speak out in solidarity with Palestinians. What they want is the Australian government to break all its ties with Israel. The Speak Up for Palestine was organised in response to the recent unrest. Open the borders, close the camps! Free the refugees! Open the borders, close the camps! Thousands took to the streets in Melbourne on a sunny Sunday afternoon to stand in solidarity with refugees. Protesters from all ages and backgrounds gathered at the State Library steps to take part in a national day of action. Senator of the Greens Party, Sarah Hansen Young, showed her support. Let's get those kids out and end the madness that is magnified and nobody. Many marched with the same message. I think it's really important that everyone recognises that our asylum seekers are just people like us. The protesters here are demanding our government take immediate action to shut down the detention centres. What they want is to end offshore processing immediately. Organisers of the rally, refugee... So what could be more Melbourne than a festival in a tram? Zena Chalmers went along for the ride. You could mistake him for a busker on a Melbourne tram. The former winner of Triple J's Unearthed is here for the first tram fest. Laying down the tracks were upcoming Australian talent, invited by organisers Yarra Trams and La Trobe University. Singing away the winter blues on number 86, commuters enjoyed the Sunday sounds. It's really awesome actually to just get on the tra on tram and listen to the music. Yeah. Is this the weirdest place that you've been? I'm gonna say yes, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Public transport hasn't always been an enjoyable experience in Melbourne, but clearly the fun atmosphere on this tram is keeping commuters happy. It was a day of commuter chaos, with Pakenham train lines causing delays of up to four hours. Morning travellers were forced to wait for replacement buses at Dandenong Station. The wait proving too long for students. Thousands of Muslims take to the streets of Melbourne today, calling for peace. Almost 10,000 Muslims marched the streets, stopping traffic and chanting for the commemoration of Ashura. Sydney's King's Cross. It's a notorious hotspot for drinking and partying. It's a youth magnet every Friday and Saturday night and has become synonymous with alcohol-fueled violence. Since the death of two teenagers at the cross in 2012, despite being a victim of alcohol-related violence himself, Nelson doesn't believe that locking people in is the only solution. So what are some of the alternatives? Youth drug and alcohol experts are saying there are more than one contributing reasons as to why young people are getting violent when they drink. And there are other solutions to these problems. Youth drug and alcohol project... Dina Chalmers, Prime News.
one of you guys to explain what the conflict was about? pardon? Can you explain what the conflict was about? Oh, just some left-wing scum was trying to take a bloke's Aussie flag. So... Okay, and where, who are you here to support? UPF. Uh-huh, and what are your views on what's going on at the moment? Well, I think it's fair, it's right, it's good. So, could you elaborate on that a little bit? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> you put me on the so spot. So, what are your views on Muslims at the moment? Well, I think they, the Sharia law should not even be considered to be and a thing here. And what do you have that Sharia law is coming to Australia? It's already here. It's here. Yeah, can I... It's already I, here. Do you guys approve? It's already here. It's your left-wing media that denies it. And you're part of the media that we're deny it. We're media. We're online media. Yeah. We're independent. Independent. So we're just trying to report the truth. So we need to get aside from Reclaim Australia. Would you guys be happy to be... We're not speaking on behalf of Reclaim. What are you speaking on behalf of? We're not speaking on behalf of We're, we're here we're to just Australians. celebrate the everyday... Um, what's the word? Patriotism. Yeah, patriotism and the every, everyday rights that we have as, you know, Australians. And, and these people are trying to change that. These people being... Yeah, always full of race being um, lefties. Left wing... Socialists. You know, have to be different. And, and nine times out of ten, they're uh, uni students. Um, under the age of 25, who have no real grasp of what it means to be Australian. What does it mean to be Australian to you? Oh, I'm, I'm not getting Armenian.